Now we're going to talk about our galaxy, the Milky Way, again. Remember, we're trying to get a feel for how big our universe is. We talked about the moon and the earth, we talked about our solar system, but now we realize our solar system is just one small part of a very, very, very big conglomerate of stars called a galaxy. And we live in what we call the Milky Way galaxy because in ancient times when people looked at the sky, they saw this band of light across the sky, they know what they were looking at, they called out the Milky Way, it looked whitish. And now what we're realizing that is, is when we look at the sky and we look in the direction of the disk of the Milky Way, we see that large conglomeration of stars. Remember, the Milky Way is kind of a flat disk of stars, kind of like a, an, an old photograph, uh, an old um, record for a record player. It's very thin this way, and then in the, in the center it has like a bulge of stars. So it's kind of like spherical at the center, but very disk-like, like a pancake, uh, pretty well shaped very thin this way, very large in this direction. And so when you're inside this pancake shape and you look straight up or straight down, you don't see a lot of stars, but when you look in the direction of the disk itself, there's stars as far as the eye can see in all directions. And so we see that glow of light across the sky that is looking in the direction of the disk of the Milky Way galaxy. How big is our Milky Way galaxy? Well, it turns out it's about 100,000 light years across, probably a little bit more than that. 100,000 light years. That means if you went to one end of the galaxy, you turn on your flashlight and you send the beam of light streaming across the galaxy, it would take 100,000 years for the beam of light to, end, to go from one side of the galaxy all the way to the other side of the galaxy, provided, of course, it doesn't run into any kind of dust cloud or stars or anything else. It's Assuming it has a straight path, it would take 100,000 years for that light beam to get across. Now remember, light travels at 186,000 miles per second. It goes from here to the moon in just over a second, from here to the sun in a little bit over eight minutes. But it would take 100,000 years for a light beam to get across the Milky Way galaxy. It's an immense region, just absolutely immense. Remember, when we have two stars that are this big in, in relationship to each other, you would have to place those hundreds of miles apart, in the case of the Sun and Alpha Centauri, it would be 800 miles apart at this scale. Imagine how big this vast region of space would be, a Milky Way galaxy like this, because it contains about 250 billion stars just like our Sun. Imagine 250 billion objects like this spread out in this disk-like structure. And yet, this is where you have an enormous concentration of stars. Here's a beautiful picture of the um, M51, which is what we call the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's about 30, 40 million light years away from here. Again, beautiful picture. And really what you're looking at is you're looking at the central bulge of the galaxy here. It's kind of a head-on shot. So instead of looking at it edgewise, you're looking at it straight from the top because it's angled that way. And notice how the stars are just circling around Kind of like you can imagine that this thing rotates around like this and the arms of the spiral galaxy just kind of rotate along with it. But imagine the vast, immense number of stars. Our Milky Way galaxy looks kind of like that. It's a little bit more bar-shaped, but we'll get into that detail in a later video. But again, this is a good representation of what a galaxy looks like. And our sun, our solar system, is away from the center of that galaxy at a distance of about 27,000 light years from the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Imagine, 27,000 light years. And this whole thing is circling very slowly around like that in such a way that our sun is slowly making a trip around the Milky Way galaxy. And it takes about 250 million years for our sun to make one trip around the galaxy. The galaxy's been around for a while, our sun's been around for a while, so it's made quite a few trips around the galaxy like that, just slowly churning around at a rate of about 250 million years for each complete rotation of that galaxy. Wow, just Im imagine 250 billion stars spread out in this disk-like structure, this enormity where it takes 100,000 light years, 100,000 years for light to travel from one end to the end. It's just absolutely immense. Imagine 100,000 years. Imagine a lifetime, 80 years, 100 years, if you're lucky to live 100 years. Imagine light traveling at 186,000 miles per second every second of that lifetime. And after you've lived your entire life, light has traveled about 80 or 90 or 100 light years, if, if you will, very blessed with a good life. But that would be just a smidgen. That would only be one one thousand the time it would take for light to go all the way across the galaxy. Imagine one one thousand the distance. If this is a small little sliver like that, in a lifetime, light would only travel from there to there. And then you would need a thousand more lifetimes 
for light to travel all the way across the galaxy. Imagine that. Imagine how big this place is. And what's outside the galaxy? Well, outside the galaxy, pretty well empty space. Not much of anything else. And then if you go far enough, you end up at a different galaxy. It turns out our galaxy is surrounded by a few small number of what we call dwarf galaxies. We have the Magellanic Clouds, the large and the small Magellanic Cloud. We have another one on the, on the other side of the galaxy, and there's several more that are kind of close by. But in our own local group, and we'll talk more about how galaxies are clustered together, there's another very large galaxy called the Andromeda Galaxy, right over here. And at the scale, if I drew the galaxy about this big, and notice that if this is 100 light years across, if you take 22 of those all the way across, eventually you would end up at another galaxy like the Milky Way galaxy called the Andromeda galaxy. That galaxy is 2.2 million light years away, which means that any light coming from the Andromeda galaxy would take an enormous 2.2 million years to get to us. Imagine at 186,000 miles every single second, it would take 2.2 million years. That's a time span that is unbelievably unimaginable. And yet, the Andromeda Galaxy is one of our neighbors. It's one of the closest galaxies to us in this vast universe. The Andromeda Galaxy is probably a little bit larger than our own Milky Way Galaxy, a little bit more than 100,000 light years across. But yet, think about this enormous void of space in between with virtually nothing, nothing to interrupt a flow of light to go from the Andromeda Galaxy to us. Imagine the size of, a, of this space, this own backyard of the universe, so to speak, when you think about our local galaxies, how far they are away they are. If somebody were to go and snatch the Andromeda galaxy away, we wouldn't figure that out or find out for another 2.2 million years because light that has just left the Andromeda galaxy is on its way, and even though it's not there anymore, if you could shield it out somehow, that light would still be traveling to us, and 2.2 million years from now, that light from the Andromeda galaxy would finally reach us. And then if one day it was gone, we were, oh wow, 2.2 million light years away, somebody snatched away the Andromeda galaxy. Of course, not possible. But there it is. Now the question is, how many of these things are in our universe? How big is our entire universe? It must be filled with these galaxies. And that's really the question. And one of the big questions that we've been able to answer by putting, putting the Hubble Space Telescope in space. And in my next video, I will begin to talk about the size of the entire universe. All these galaxies filling up our entire universe. How many must there be and how big is our universe really? Come to think of it, when you think of just a few galaxies around in our own environment, our own backyard, and it's already this enormous size, imagine how big the entire universe would be. There you go. I hope you're getting a feel for how big this universe is that we live in.